Powerhouse, presented by Alliant Energy. Alliant Energy, we're on for you. Do you know what this is? What you're looking at is an array of solar panels, and solar power is one of the most common types of renewable energy. We're going to find out all about it today. Helping us out is Andrew Bangert. Andrew, tell us about the application here. This particular application is uh, what we call a solar array. Um, it's 12 panels uh, in groups of four that produce DC electricity that goes back out onto the grid as AC electricity. Now, tell me about the placement, too. Is that where we want to put the panels on the roof of the building? There's many different places to put solar panels. Uh, you have to work with the homeowner or the customer, uh, depending on where the location is, depending on where there's an open spot, a window. You're looking for roughly, a, at minimum, a 10 to 2 o'clock window of pure full sun. Uh, so one, one of the main considerations, absolutely. There's pole-mounted systems that can track the sun all day long, but the main thing you're looking for is that there are no shadows in the 10 to 2 o'clock window. Great. Well, it looks great from here. Let's go take a closer okay. look. Okay. You know, Andrew, the closer I get, the more pretty it is. It really looks different when you get up close. Yeah, nice iridescent blue color. Uh, that blue comes from the different uh, materials applied to the cells to allow them to gather more of the spectrum of light, uh, which excites the electrons to move a little bit more. Uh, tempered glass frame, uh, aluminum anodized uh, frame around the outside. Uh, basically designed to last 20, 25 years is, is a typical warranty for these panels. And, and it's durable? Very durable. They'll take, uh, that, I believe it was a one inch hailstone at 60 miles an hour. Wow. What, what is the pro uh, product here or the... Well, what I have here is a couple uh, samples right here. Silicone is actually the most plentiful mineral on the face of the earth. And this would be a pure silicone right here, just a pure silicone ingot. And this is a silicone ingot with all the electrical uh, uh, properties applied front and back. And this is just designed to allow the uh, DC electrical circuit to uh, begin flowing. Now, if you wouldn't mind really simply explaining this process, how do we gather energy from the sun? Well, real simply, the uh, sun hits these cells, excites the photons, and they move through a circuit. And when we do that, we make them do work, either an inverter or... I have an example right here of a solar cell. There's a DC motor on that fan. It's 12 volts. This is a 12-volt nominal solar panel here. You notice it's not turning at all. As soon as I lift it up and expose it to light, away we go. We have action. Now, we can make that happen through an inverter, where it's actually creating a sine wave to push back on the utility. We can store this in batteries. Uh, you can use it for deep well pumping. There's just a whole bunch of applications for solar. So what happens if the sun isn't shining? Uh, basically, these, all, these panels are all rated in what they call sunlight conditions. So if the sun's shining really bright, that's what this panel is actually rated at. And the production of these panels has to do with the available light, meaning if it's very low light, you just produce less. An example would be, again, if I put this back down, or any fraction of, of down to up, you'll notice it goes slower and faster. And so basically, uh, you just produce more or less electricity. That helps me a lot. Now, looking back at the 70s, remember, you know, during the energy crisis, we saw a lot of solar panels back then. Yes, we saw a lot of solar panels, but we didn't see too many photovoltaic panels. They were basically something that was started in the space program because uh, for a way to produce space, uh, electricity in outer space. Um, a lot of hot water panels and a lot of hot air panels. And the technology was pretty new back then. I think there's a lot of people very excited in it, but the technology was very new. Nowadays, we have solid-state electronic components putting, uh, allowing these things to produce electricity. These chips pretty much originated in the uh, computer industry. Um, we also have some new types of silicone along the, coming up here with those shingles right there. It's a, a version we call building integrated, which actually, this would actually be the shingle, uh, as I'm showing my, by my display here. This shingle here takes the place of a regular traditional asphalt shingle, which has a, a short lifespan and is also becomes pure garbage when it's done. Wow, much less obtrusive. That really yeah, yeah. It does give a nice look to the roof nice. as well. Now let's talk cost because back in the 70s, like, this was an expensive thing yes, to do. Yes, yeah. Cost has come down about 300 percent since the 70s, and right now, in today's cost, we're looking at roughly about nine dollars a watt to install a system, which has come down a buck or two a watt since I've started. The uh, overall overall cost of a system is somewhere between 10 and 15 cents a kilowatt hour for a grid-based system and compare that to your eight cents a kilowatt hour that we're paying right now, seems like it's a little bit more, but the cost of the power is going up and the cost of these is coming down. Right, what are the other advantages to having 
solar panels. Well, a nice thing about a solar panel is if we're talking payback, if we're talking pure electrical payback, these will pay back electricity-wise in three to five years. All the electricity used to make this glass, these cells, the frame, that all that electricity is made up again in this solar panel in three to five years. Now, if they carry a 20, 25 year warranty on them, you're getting a lot of free electricity. Great. Well, thank you so much for this information. My pleasure. We're really glad that people are thinking about renewable energy. Stay with us. We'll be back with more Powerhouse.